Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. So if you've ever used text plus in the fusion tab in a color managed project, you know that for some reason, as soon as you go to the edit or color page, the colors don't look right anymore. So let's talk about why that is and how we can actually fix that. So what is the problem? To begin, let's look at our color management settings first. Here in the project settings, we are using the DaVinci Intermediate HDR preset. And if you want to know more about color management in general, I have a bunch of videos talking about the ins and outs of color management so you understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's say we create a title in the exact color of a brand's corporate identity. We use a specific hex code and inside the Fusion everything looks perfect. But as soon as we exit the Fusion page, the colors are completely wrong. And for comparison, let's just add a generator with the exact same color value underneath the text plus, so we can see if it matches. And yes, the generators in Resolve magically just work. So our generator is our ground truth. This is what we want to match the colors to. Oh, and by the way, if we create the same title in a project that is not color managed, all of a sudden it works. So one fix would be to just do the titles in a different project. Sure, but there's a better way and let's first talk about why the colors are wrong in the first place. So in a color manage project, the Fusion tab becomes color space aware. It knows that the timeline is in a certain working color space and the Fusion tab itself wants to work in linear. Why? That's just common practice for VFX and it is generally the best idea. Linear basically just means that the colors behave exactly as in the real world and simple math operations like multiplication become super useful to create realistic results. If you want to know more about this topic, check out the videos linked in the video description. Okay, so the Fusion tab wants to be linear. So because it knows the timeline color space, it simply converts the colors to linear, applies the Fusion operations and at the end, it converts back to the timeline color space again. Now, where is the problem? The problem here is that our text plus elements are inside of the Fusion tab. So they only receive the conversion from linear to our timeline color space. This makes them go flat and desaturated. Another thing to remember is that because it is a color managed project, everything is happening underneath the ODT, the output device transform that gets us from the timeline color space to the display color space. And in most cases, this display color space would be Rec. 709. So to recap, we create exact colors based on specific predefined color values, but then we apply a color space transform from linear to log, and then a second color space transform from log to display. So what is the solution? I actually found this fix by trying out the following idea. Let's try to reverse the image pipeline so it cancels itself out. So far it goes DaVinci White Gamut Linear to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, and then DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So let's go to the color page and reverse this starting from the back. First let's go Rec. 709 to DaVinci Intermediate, but let's just use the Use Timeline option because this will come in handy later on. So it's Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 to Use Timeline, Use Timeline, and then we tick the box for the inverse UTF. So this is basically inversing the ODT. And then we add a node before going from DaVinci Intermediate to Linear, which would be the inverse from the conversion from the Fusion tab to the Edit tab. And again, let's set it to Use Timeline here. So that would be Use Timeline, Use Timeline for the input and Use Timeline Linear for the output. And this should in theory reverse the color pipeline completely, but for some reason it still doesn't look right. Why? Because we have to enable one final thing. We have to set the tone mapping method in this node to DaVinci and leave everything else as is. And as you can see, the colors are finally correct. Okay, what if you don't work with the DaVinci Intermediate preset? Now this works with most of these presets. Let's look at the automatic SDR preset for example, which is identical to the SDR Rec. 709 preset. Here we wouldn't even need the second node because it converts Rec. 709 to Rec. 709 as we set up the CST to use the timeline color space, which is Rec. 709. So essentially it's doing nothing, but as you can see, right away the colors are correct. Okay, and finally the automatic HDR preset, which is also quite commonly used. For this one, it is a bit special because here we have to change the custom max output in this color space transform to 106. And please don't ask me why, I have spent way too much time already trying to understand what Resolve is actually doing, even found some weird bugs while doing so. So anyway, this works, so go ahead and use this. Oh, and of course, it also works with ACES. However, here you must not use the CST OFX for the inverse ODT, but the ACES transform OFX. So this one goes from Rec. 709 to ACES CCT. 
I know this was a rather complicated video for such a simple thing, but I found it important to not only know how to fix this problem, but to actually understand why it exists. Color management in Resolve can be incredibly complicated and a lot of the problems we experience with it are hard to deal with if we don't understand how Resolve works. So I hope this tip finally settles the confusion around text plus elements in color managed projects. If you like this kind of videos, let me know in the comments below and also please share it with a friend. But if you're new here, make sure you're subscribed to not miss out on upcoming episodes. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.